the divine grace of God that transforms you into a saint comes through your neighborhood, like your parish. That's Taylor Kemp, former professional soccer star and vice president of content at the Augustine Institute. We heard that form.org was revamping their most popular series called Symbolon by focusing on the church in America, and we wanted to figure out why. So in this episode, you'll hear what they did to make it even better. We wanted the people to watch to feel like this was more relevant to them. The Catholic story is your story. The state of the church in America. Is, is the church in decline in America? Yes. Like all the numbers, there's less baptisms, less marriages, less sacraments. So yeah. that's true. Now, and some amazing stories of American saints you haven't heard before. Jesuit missionaries who came to minister in North America to the native peoples, were tortured by them, went back to France, and then they said, I have to go back. All that and more, so stay tuned. We are super excited that Symbolon is being yeah. redone. And and I'm excited, yeah. um, as I was reading about it, it seemed like you guys yeah. did a lot of the filming or kind of focused on the church in America, mm -hmm. which maybe you can relate to this. Like when we put our kids to bed, um, we read, you know, usually we'll read like a Bible, a kid's Bible story and a kid's saint story to them. Mm -hmm. And recently I've been reading a lot of the saint stories. And I'm like, oh, great. Another saint <laughs> from Italy. Like, <laughs> super cool, you know. Um, <laughs> which is cool. They are cool. They're awesome. They're, They're super amazing. sweet saints. Sometimes I just wish that there were a couple more uh, from America, but it seems like you guys kind of focused on that. So talk about that. Why did you guys, what did you find about the church in America um, that made it where you were like, we need to highlight this. And what do you think that has to bring to our culture right now? Yeah. So, um, you know, when we made the original symbol on in a lot of catechetical series have followed suit where they were filmed in Rome and the Holy Land, which we love. Like the, that's really the roots of our faith are in the Holy Land in Rome. Um, but as we were desiring to revamp symbol on, which was, has been our most successful popular product ever. Um, and it's now 11 years old. So we thought it was time to give it an update. We were like, well, what, what do we want to do differently? What do we, and for us, we were really impacted by the Second Vatican Council's universal call to holiness. We knew that the, the majority of viewers are going to be stateside. They're going to be in the United States. And we wanted to realize, like, the Catholic faith, it's not just some words on a page. It's not just some historical record. It's not just some thing to be learned. It's supposed to transform your life you are called to become a saint and we wanted to hold up examples of of people who found authentic sanctity on american soil a because it's it's more relevant like it's mm -hmm. hey you know this person lived four hours away from me like wow that's cool um and then it also we just want to be like it's possible you guys you can become a saint here there are people who were transformed by the grace of God to the state of blessedness or, or saint, uh, or canonization that they are, they're considered a canonized saint. And so we thought, A, it's different, which is, which is fun to do. B, um, we wanted the people to watch to feel like this was more relevant to them. It's not this thing that's over in, you know, in, in Europe that's older and not whatever we're going to be like, no, 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 this is the Catholic story is your story. Um, mm -hmm. And to call people to that that holiness today, and the storytelling was like it was super fun. I mean, it was so cool for ourselves to get more familiar with these stories as we traveled. We really made a pilgrimage around the United States, and to try to tell these stories and really pull out um, the special stuff about it. Because the way we did it is um, this: the series walks through the creed, right? That's what. When someone becomes Catholic, that's what they're assenting to is, is the creed, the, the faith of the church. Um, and some of those things, as you guys know, as catechists, like are they're abstract, right? Like the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity, which is the life of God. Um, yeah. You know, how do you, you can teach it, but it's a little abstract. And so we're, the question is like, okay, how can we make that more enfleshed or visible to the audience? And so that episode took place in Ariesville, New York, where the North American martyrs came through. And we're like, can you really understand these Jesuit missionaries who came to minister in North America to the native peoples, were tortured by them, went back to France, and then they said, I have to go back. Can you understand that story apart from the supernatural gift of infused charity? You can't. Like, it, there's no 
explaining that. And so we told the story of the North American martyrs to help people understand like that the grace of God, it's not an abstract idea. It actually will change people. And here's a story that makes that more visible because you cannot understand what they did apart from the theological virtues. So it was super fun. We went all around the United States. It was a real blessing for me to be a co-host and, and um, kind of help craft those stories for half of the episodes. Um, so yeah, we, we want to call people to holiness and we thought this was a, a fun, cool, really beautiful way to do it. Yeah. Mm, I, lo- I love that. I love, I love the idea of stories because it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's so easy when we're trying to impart what, what we have onto someone else where you, you, where you go into this like monologue of just like <laughs> A, B, C, D, like, here's the things like it's, uh, there's, I just want logic to throw at your face and you'll be so <laughs> overwhelmed that you'll be knocked off your feet and you can't, not can't, actually can't how pos- we learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't possibly dispute any of this because it's St. Thomas Aquinas and that dude was way smarter than me. Um, but I find that in, my, in reflecting just in prayer in my own life, like the things that convict me so much are stories. And I was thinking about this, our, our one-year-old right now, the, the first four words that she ever said, the first one was dada, which I'm four for four on their first word being <laughs> dada, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, the second one was mama. The third one was food. And then the fourth one is she brings her hand over to the couch and she points at books and she says, read, read, read. And it's like, our, my kids love stories. And uh, I'm, I'm actually writing a book for them right now because I've been praying about like, how can I pass on the faith to them? And I'm like, they love, but they love these epic stories and tales. And I'm like, well, if that's the, if that's the best, what the best thing that they, they love and they love to do, like, man, why, why not try to, to pass on the faith that way. So I'm, I'm excited that you guys brought in that storytelling instead of just um, throwing book knowledge at people. What, what would you say? Um, so the North American Martyrs is an awesome story. What were some other um, mm-hmm. stories that came out of America that uh, you think like would be really good for our listeners to hear? Yeah. So we went to St. Augustine, Florida, where the first mass was. We went to Philadelphia to tell the story of St. John Neumann, who founded the first parochial school system here in America. Ariesville for the North American Martyrs. We went to the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe in La Crosse, Wisconsin, to tell the story of how um, Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico found its way into the United States to inform the faith. We were in Chamayo in New Mexico, where there's um, holy dirt and healings. We went to um, Pilsen, Kansas, to tell the story of Father Emil Capon. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, which is a great <laughs> favorite. I didn't host that one, but it was one of my favorite. It turned out to be one of my favorite episodes. Um, we went to Oklahoma um, for Blessed Stanley Rother. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so we we were we went all over. I mean, even we went to um, Menlo Park in California, just to a really classic neighborhood parish to just talk about like this. That that episode really is about the sacraments, and it's like. The divine grace of God that transforms you into a saint comes through your neighborhood, like your parish, like super humble parish. And we're like, that's where we're going to talk about like the height of, of the Christian life for the the church militant in the sacraments, because it's like, that's the paradox that the incarnation is the model of all things. Like the, the divine nature of God Mm -hmm. he truly takes on our humanity and that is continued through the sacrament. So we just went to a neighborhood parish in California. (laughs) I love that that because I think far uh, often we look at the past and we hold up the fact that we have a 2000 year history in the church Mm -hmm. and there is a beauty in that, but also to acknowledge that the church is alive today Mm -hmm. and that it's present to us. And, Oh, do we have time for this question? Yeah. But the reality of just kind of the history of America and the yeah. like where we are today, how do you see the church? Uh, is it dying off? Is it growing? Where are we at? Uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> is is the church in decline in America? Yes. Like all the numbers, there's less baptisms, less marriages, less sacraments. So yeah. that's true. Now, um, so for one, there was a great prophecy from uh, Pope Benedict, where he says that the church in the West is going to decline to a kind of like a humble seed, but from that it will grow, which is the same model of the early church. So 
to some extent, I think as Catholics, like it's okay to, it's good to look at the numbers to understand Mm -hmm. what's going on. What does the social data tell us? But to also recognize like, Look at the story of salvation history. Israel was reduced to almost nothing. And then from that came everything. And so, I, but I think that's happening. I think that in the West, in the, in the church in America, it's continuing to decline in dioceses across the country. We're seeing parishes being clustered. Mm-hmm. We're seeing less vocation. So certainly the church is in decline and that matters. Like that should be a, a concern for us. Um but it's the mustard seed. It always will be. It'll it it it'll get small. It'll grow large. It'll um, it'll corrupt in its own way, and it'll be purified again. And that cycle will continue, I think, until until the Lord comes again. Mm-hmm. So it's in decline for sure. Here at the Augustine Institute, we are uh, an apostolate laboring for renewal. Um, yeah. So we believe that there are things that need renewal. Uh, so it is needs help. Uh, the Lord needs laborers and they're, they are few. Um, who, what's going to happen to the church in America in the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years? I have no idea. <laughs> um, but it's okay. Like yeah. the Lord is the author of history and, and our, our job is fidelity. And here we're trying to create things that are help building it up as you guys are. Yeah. Um, and that's a great joy. And who knows what that means? Like is the church, going to be is it going to be illegal to be catholic in 20 years like it could be i don't know like what world is what america is going to be there when our kids grow up yeah i don't know (laughs) are they going to be martyrs maybe like Mm -hmm. it's hard to say um so that was a non-answer i would say (laughs) (laughs) i understand i think that there is like a great uh refining that is happening there is a burning off and then there is a great hope that out of that that we arise in a beautiful way uh, mm. with the Lord, which is which is the way He works. Yeah, and I great hope. I always want to encourage our listeners uh, because it can be easy when you look at social media, when you look at the yeah. news, um, or even some of these studies. Like you were saying, I think it is important to have a a real grasp on on what is happening in the church. Mm. But I think mm. it's also important to realize, like, to find those things that the Lord is doing that it that are unbelievable because mm-hmm. that's how the Lord works in these times of um, of despair or refinement is I believe I truly believe that He raises up saints. Mm-hmm. I mean, He like that is how the church um, gets through these things is when when mm-hmm. people have the courage to stand up and there are some like incredible things that are going on in um in america you know specifically right now a lot of ministries like we were just at a a conference they had a healing service and um this girl that was in front of me she walked in on crutches her foot had been crushed um and she she couldn't even go to the conference the day before because she was in so much pain and they prayed over her and she took the boot off walked up on stage and then spent the rest of the day walking around barefoot because i don't think she had a she didn't bring her shoes (laughs) she was in a boot um but like like miracles are happening like the lord is working in our life the lord is working in america in america the lord um the holy spirit is doing amazing things so i man i just so many times like i know that we're hurting as a culture but also um i just want to give people hope um that that man god has not abandoned us and god has a plan and there are amazing things that are going on in this world so yep yeah taylor we just want to thank you for your time i uh, for this conversation i feel like there's so many yeah. so much more that we want to dive into i we just pray that the holy spirit continues uh, to guide people to dive deeper into these topics uh, and find the resources that help in that process and then for those who are looking for more from taylor definitely check out form.org uh, the augustine institute has done incredible work there you are producing wonderful shows where else can people find things or any uh, tips on that yeah. Uh, well, so first, if, if anyone does want to stay in the loop about Symbolon, yeah. they can go to augustininstitute.org forward slash Symbolon. Symbolon is a weird Greek word. It's S-Y-M-B-O-L-O-N. Um, so that's how you can find it. You can put in your name and uh, we'll keep you in the loop. Uh, and the episodes go out just so everyone knows on July 17th. So you can okay. access those 
unformed beginning July 17th. Um, you know, for me personally, I'm the worst person on the planet to stay relevant to because I don't have social media or website or blog or anything. So uh, unlucky. The, yeah. Keep an eye on the on at the Augusta Institute informed because that's I, that's probably the best place. Uh, so that that's really it. But I, I hope Symbolon is a great blessing to the church. And then yeah, thanks for you know at the Augusta Institute we want to create things that are. Um, orthodox, meaning the right faith, beautiful, compelling, relevant to people's lives. So, so check us out if you haven't. And then, yeah, thank, thanks to you guys for the opportunity to come on the show and, and for your ministry. It is beautiful to see how the Lord puts invitations on everyone's hearts about how they can serve and build up the church. So it's, it's a joy to be on. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. For our listeners, we're praying for you until next time. God bless. If you enjoyed that conversation, check out our other half of our conversation with Taylor, where we talk about evangelizing within high-performing teams and his experience as a professional soccer player.